What's up? Good morning, good morning. Mm -hmm. What's up, Amrit? Big brother, what up? Uh, let's see. Found this really cool uh, filter today, man. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. It just brightens everything up. I find the last few IGs were so dark. I'm just gonna put on my headphones. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Let me know if y'all could hear me. If you could hear me. Drop a little emoji. Drop a little thumbs up. Drop a little heart. Uh, wave. Say something to me. Let's see. There we am. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? <clears throat> Markham Yoga. OMG. I better get into my Zen moment. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This is day seven of the daily, daily talk. Those of you that are first time listeners, first time watchers, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, we get to chat every single morning about different topics that focus on money, that focus on emotion, that focus on uh, moving a step further than where you are today. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Sats B, Satish Bala. I've been doing this for a really long time now, just sort of you know, building out these uh, conversations and, and things like that. Um, this show is called the Making Money Move Show. And what's cool is, uh, what up, Emmett? Good morning. Um, we talk about money from many different perspectives, not just how to make it, but also how to make sure you understand how you're making it, what your relationship with money is. And it's the one thing that everybody thinks about every single day, but we don't have a blueprint or a relationship with money. So that's what the show's about. Um, also, I'm working on my first book, so uh, this gives me a really good chance to not only get some feedback from y'all, but also share some of the thinking that I'm working on in my book around money and emotions and relationship and historical baggage and how to move forward and letting go of toxic, toxic thoughts and, and consciously designing uh, important thoughts. Um, it's every morning, man. Every morning. We're live from... From uh, 9 a.m. to 9.30. Or sometimes I have a guest. Sometimes it's just me. Today is just me. Uh, tomorrow we have a great guest. My buddy Ara, who's a CEO of Atamu Culture. But also an incredible entrepreneur. I can't wait for you guys to meet him. Uh, but it's every morning, Monday to Friday. Emmett and I have been doing it straight for seven days now. And I'm so excited. Um, so I'm going to dive right in. Because this is a very important topic. Something that I've been working on in the book, but also been talking to in keynotes and presentations. Um, the, the, the thing that I, you know, uh, have realized from my own life is so much of the work I do um, starts as this idea of success or failure. And the whole idea around the word success and failure is something that I've never fully understood. You know, it starts very early in life, very, very early in life where the minute you go into school, they start to gauge you on success or failure. And most of our life, success and failure, at least for the first chunk, 15 years, 17 years, whatever it is, um, is dictated by other people. The teachers have a grade score, you have to hit it or you don't. Your parents base some very interesting decisions about you at a very early age based on their academic results. And then we build this baggage of emotional weight around what is failure or what is success. I was a dumb student, a really dumb student, by choice. Meaning, I never cared about education until much later in life because I didn't know what the hell it was for. I didn't know why I was studying the things I was studying. I didn't understand why I was going to uh, listen to teachers that didn't really understand what was happening with me. I was one of 20, 30, 50 students in a class. I just never understood the model. And this notion of especially like I grew up in Singapore, 
So you have to be up by 6 a.m., 6.30, be out the door by 7.30 in the morning for school. I never really understood it. What am I learning so early at 7.30 a.m. when I'm 10 or 11 or 12? Uh, I get, you know, we're, dis- we're creating discipline. I get that part. We're creating routine. We're creating good habits. But I never really understood it. And because I didn't understand it, I wasn't a good student. And because I wasn't a good student, so much of my early life was considered a failure. And the word, if you break it down, right, uh, the word, is, it simply means, what's up, Karen? Uh, the word failure uh, if you break it down, simply says you didn't accomplish something that you set out to accomplish. That's it. Whether it's a relationship, whether it's a grade, uh, whether it's a startup, whether it's a job opportunity, uh, whatever you think you failed, if you change the word from the word fail to accomplish, now you say, I didn't accomplish a goal that I set out to do. And what's really interesting is when we say we didn't accomplish something or we accomplished something, there's things in there that can help you. And it immediately takes the emotion out of the word failure, which historically from school, parents, uh, whatever it is, comes with this emotional baggage, this unwarranted emotional baggage that immediately shuts you down. Oh, man, I failed. And think about it. We never say we failed at the micro level. We say we failed at the macro level. Like, I suck. I failed in business. Well, maybe you didn't fail in business. You weren't that good in sales. Or your strategy was off. Or you weren't a good leader and your staff left you. Or you weren't good at client service and your customers left you. But you didn't fail in business. You know, I failed in school. No, maybe you sucked at calculus and geometry, but you're amazing in architecture and art and design and computers. But this notion of failure is such a big emotional word that a lot of other things in your brain is shut down. And when it shuts down, you miss the lessons. You miss the opportunity to evolve. You miss the opportunity to learn from yourself. And that is the thing that I've been thinking about as I've been working on this chapter How do we better define failure and structure or failure and success? How do we find a balance between the two? And how do we connect them so that the more you fail, the more you succeed. The more you succeed, the more you learn about yourself. And in both cases, you're accomplishing things you want to accomplish in life, whatever it may be. I'm reading my notes. By the way, if you have any questions or if you want to debate or you tell me I'm full of shit, feel free to, man, because this is all about like connecting and engaging and, and understanding what it is that you know is, is holding you back, but at the same time giving me a chance to talk about the things that are important, uh, my perspective. So when you change a narrative, what's up, Anu? When you change a narrative and you remove the emotion around the word failure, And it's not just the word failure. There's a bunch of other words that I used to use. You know, embarrassed. uh, You know, uh, the word suck. I used to say that all the time. I suck at this. I suck at that. I suck at this. When you use words like those, what you're doing is you're empowering that word with so much emotion that you've removed the ability for you to really understand what is happening, why something happened, and it shuts down your mind. And if we reversed the word and started to say, I didn't accomplish something. I didn't accomplish you know, running this business. I didn't accomplish hiring great staff. I didn't accomplish finishing grade seven. I didn't accomplish a good grade in math. And when we start to use the word accomplish, it starts to change the way you look at the outcome, which is really all failure and success is meant to do, is to give you some sort of a measurement that you can use to either continue to, to keep doing something or decide not to do it. But we use this big word like fail and succeed with full of emotion that we shut down and we don't end up actually listening to what happened or how to continue doing it better. For me, uh, my early, early startups, like we're talking 2000, um, I was so afraid of failing. Not because from a money or business perspective, but like, 
telling my parents that, you know, this idea of a business that I started didn't work out um, was so scary for me because I had such weight in their opinion on my success. Even though they weren't working with me, they weren't making sales calls, they weren't helping me hire, they weren't funding the company. This baggage that I got to go back to them and say, hey, I failed was so big that I started to play safe. And it was only much later in life when I realized, well, their opinion of my failure or success or anybody else's opinion of failure and success doesn't really teach me anything. It's a public outbound message. I started to rethink what does failure or success mean to me. And then it gave me the confidence to take more risks because now you're playing by your own set of rules and not all the people's set of rules. So by changing the narrative, uh, we tend to ask ourselves, why did something happen? Because if you think about it, like when something is successful, we never stop and say, like, why was it successful? What did I do right? Why did this time work? Who worked with me that enabled it to work? Why did this idea, did this time work really well? We don't ask those questions. But when things fail... We tend to deep dive into an emotional baggage and a train wreck of all these questions like, why me? And why did it happen to me? And, you know, uh, was it God's fault? Was it the economics? Was it, there's so many variables that we don't understand when things go right or wrong or things get accomplished that they don't, that we just get stuck in this like negative train, uh, but we never do the opposite when we're succeeding because the emotion is so much higher. Like, oh my gosh, I got something done that we forget to deep dive into it. So for me, removing the word fail and success to what do I need to accomplish today gave me the strength to look at them in a very rational way. Either I accomplish something or I don't. And if I accomplish it, I figure out why and see if I can repeat it. If I don't accomplish it, I ask the same question, why? And we go forward and figure it out. But if you take anything away from today, and that's right, Emmett, uh, sometimes things just happen and you don't have a reason for it. And so creating this massive, massive, massive weight of fail and succeed, it's really, really challenging to learn from yourself. And it's really, really hard to continue to take risks when I mean, you don't understand what the hell's going on. So I try to find... The balance. I don't know if you guys, when you were younger, ever played that seesaw game. You know, when somebody sits on this side and somebody sits on this side. And then your job is to go up and down. Right? And as a kid, I used to do this for hours, man. My brother, we just sit and just keep doing this. It was the most silliest, weird game. But it's like, the higher you go, the more you felt crazy. And the lower you go, the more you felt crazy. Because you got to hold it down for the other person. And I look at almost everything I do in life in that same movement. I look at it as I need to finish a few things, call them success, and I need to not finish a few things, call it failure, because both give me insights into who I am. And when you start to look at them as not failure and success, but more as accomplishments that are going to teach you something, the best part is you realize you need both. You can't always win. You can't always lose. You need both. Because when you change your mindset from I failed or succeeded to I have to accomplish a bunch of things and I either accomplished them or I didn't, you get to be in a very interesting headspace. And you get to ask questions you typically don't. For example, accomplish or not accomplish, you get to step back and say, what are my strengths and weaknesses that either helped me finish it or didn't? In almost every business, I realize my strength is success in winning customers by creating a great idea. I suck when it comes to hiring employees. I suck when it comes to, you know, uh, process and, and, and finance. So if we measure the company based on those two things, I will always be a shitty leader. I will fail as a good leader if those are my two measurements. But... If I change the narrative to what can I accomplish today to help the business grow, well, I can go find a new customer. I can make sure the business is 
you know, operating at the best efficiency possible. I can, I can hire somebody who will become a really good coach for the team. I can hire somebody who's a great finance manager who will make sure we run the company properly. But I can't think in that terms of accomplishing stuff if I'm always looking at what am I failing and what am I succeeding in. The other thing it really does when you start asking your questions around failure and, and success uh, in the context of accomplishing something, is you get to look at what are my focus areas that I should be looking at. Because we can't do everything. But the things we do really well, we have to do more of. So the focus area question, you can't ask when you tell yourself, I failed. Because it shuts down. But when you say, hey, I didn't accomplish a bunch of stuff, what happened? What areas did I not focus on? It shows you a different picture of yourself. It also allows you to understand the relationships you're getting into or the relationships you're not getting into. For the longest time, I never hired anybody because I was a shitty leader, but it also uh, made me not grow as fast because I was taking on too much. So for me, uh, understanding when to bring people into my life became a point of strength versus a weakness or a failure. When you look at things that you're accomplishing every single day and the things that you wanted to accomplish but you didn't do it, it gives you a really interesting window into yourself. Because not everything we get excited about actually gets us excited. Meaning, I might be really excited about starting a bow tie company because I love fashion. But it doesn't mean I'm going to be successful in it because I don't have the passion once you get past the, 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 the early level. Begum, what's up? Um, and that's what you know, this question of what did I accomplish allows you to do. It allows you to give you a window into yourself to be like, what makes me really tick? And the funny thing is whether you successfully accomplish some goals or you fail to accomplish some goals, by using the word accomplish and not fail or succeed, um, you tend to really think about like, why did something happen? How can I make it better the next time? And then you get to constantly decide which skills you want to invest in, which uh, things you want to repeat, which things you want to avoid. And you can't do that. And you can't do that until you diffuse, diffuse the emotion around the word failure and the word succeed. And the funny thing about this kind of mindset, at least for me, what I envy um, is the minute I start to think about everything I do from a sense of accomplishment and not will I fail or succeed Um, because success is a is a is a uh, is is not the right metric because you know probably like me you guys probably have experienced many things that felt like an immediate success but over time you realize man that was actually not a good thing to be successful at it actually hurt you or it set you up for failure because you weren't ready for something um so much of my early career in business, what felt like short-term success actually hurted us because once we hit some success, we forgot to pay attention. You get 10 clients and you think, oh my gosh, I got 10 clients who are successful. You realize you're not ready for 10 clients. You were barely ready for three. And you end up losing in the long run. And so for me, the idea of accomplishment gives me some sense of focus, gives me a way to combine my fear of failure and my need to find happiness and success into one formula. And what's really awesome is now you run towards everything you're afraid of. Because when you know you can't really fail and you know you don't really succeed, all you're doing is accomplishing a set of goals that move you one step closer to the lifestyle that you want or the things that you want or the relationship you want, then you want to run towards that goal as fast as you can. Because the sooner you get there, the faster you accomplish a few steps and ask these questions of what worked and how it worked and why it didn't work and how do I make it better, the sooner you get to the next level. And so we're not afraid. We're not afraid to run towards danger. We're not afraid to run towards risk. We're not, we're not afraid anymore because you can't really fail. And it's a very interesting mind shift because so many startup founders that I find uh, that are interested in getting into you know, entrepreneurship, they've got such a baggage around the word failure that they try to avoid it at all costs and when you try to avoid it at all costs, it's like that red car syndrome, you know? Uh, you look for a car and that's all you see. Well, that's all you get to attract. In trying to avoid failure at any cost, you tend to just attract failure. And 
when you give yourself the definition that I failed, all of a sudden now you can't find the confidence to keep taking the step forward. So that for me was a huge mental shift when I started to look at, I don't actually fail or succeed. I simply have a series of tasks that I want to accomplish. And the more I accomplish it, accomplish them, the closer I get to my goals. And finally, uh, what I've discovered at 45 is, you know, by taking this approach for the last 10, 15 years um, and, and, and not looking at my life as failure or success, but looking at what tasks I want to accomplish and how do I accomplish them magically, I'm more successful in my 40s because I figured out how to accomplish more tasks that are naturally good for me. The kind of businesses that make me, you know, the best, the kind of uh, relationships that gives me the best uh, relationships, the kind of opportunities that I'm the best in, the kind of ideas that make my brain naturally, you know, do its thing. I've asked enough of these questions in my past accomplishments that now I'm much better at picking the right opportunities that I can actually accomplish to get to the next level. And when people look at you and go, oh man, you know, uh, they see fast is amazing or you're a great entrepreneur or et cetera. Um, that took 15, 20 years of understanding how to ignore this feeling of failure and success that's embedded into you at an early age and start to think of uh, everything I do as a series of things I want to accomplish to get to the next level, removing the emotion from it and really focusing on making sure I understand why something happened. And that for me is, is it's been a life changer. Uh, so I hopefully, if you're watching this, you can change your narrative. You know, listen to yourself. Every time you say, I fail at something, know that you're shutting down a piece of your creativity, shutting down a piece of your ambition, because that's such a big damaging word. And every time you say, I succeeded, uh, stop and think for yourself why and how, so that you can start to understand what made that happen. And if you can change your complete narrative from I fail or succeeded to I want to accomplish a series of things that will allow me to get to the next level, then you're putting yourself in a power of, of in a position of power. And that is really what I hope for every one of you uh, to get into that mindset. And I'm a walking example of that, man. Like I tell you from age three to age 15, I was constantly told that I'm a failure because I suck in school academically weak and didn't really have any ambition to the point where like a small little country called Singapore sent a piece of paper to my home saying Satish is a dummy we're gonna put him into blue collar work and his options are these things from mechanic to garbage collector to sewer worker to 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 whatever the blue collar work was it was a piece of destiny that was handed over because somebody assumed a bunch of things because of the word fail or succeed. And here I am, 45, every single day accomplishing things that get me closer to the next step I want to be. And then from there, I set a new set of goals and then I keep working on them. And then when it doesn't work out, I don't get caught up on whether it failed or not. I try to understand why it didn't work out. What did I do to, 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 to make that happen? And how can I learn from it? And then on the flip side, when something does work and we achieve our goals, it's equally important to sit back and look at why did it work? How did I impact it? How did I influence it? And then how do I repeat it? So that is today's topic all about fail or succeed. And none of you have failed at anything. None of you have really succeeded at anything. You're simply accomplishing a bunch of really cool stuff that will take you to the next level. I hope this has been useful. I will be back tomorrow with the homie Ara from Tamil Culture. Please join us for an exciting conversation. And in the meantime, if you're watching this and even 1% resonated, which is all I hope for, please hit the share button, hit the follow button. I'd love to stay in touch with you. I'm back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.